Welcome back. We are continuing our unit on the killers. We are learning about the seventh leading cause of death in the U.S. So let's get started. So what is the seventh leading cause of death in the U.S. in a non-pandemic year? It happens to be diabetes. Uh, so this data, again, is from the uh, CDC uh, from 2019 in a non-pandemic year. We have previously talked about heart disease, cancer, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, and now we are going to cover diabetes. So what is diabetes? Uh, the term diabetes mellitus is Greek and Latin. It comes from, it means actually to flow through sweet. And it used to actually be diagnosed as uh, sweet tasting urine. Um, and people with diabetes often urinate uh, frequently and their urine can be sweet smelling and sweet tasting, I suppose, if you uh, would like to taste it. Um, <laughs> and we will get into why that is in today's lecture. Uh, it is a metabolic disease and it is characterized by um, chronic high blood sugar. So there are two different types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Uh, there are two, uh, a little, There's a little bit beyond this, but these are the two main types of diabetes. Uh, type 1 um, is really, is sometimes called juvenile diabetes and uh, is typically genetic and um, is a lot of times caused by the immune system attacking one's own cells. Um, the cells in particular that produce insulin um, and it attacks these cells so that insulin can no longer be produced. Um, and this happens in about um, 5% of all diabetes cases. So out of all of diabetes sufferers, only 5% of them are type 1 diabetes. So um, type 2 diabetes uh, is oftentimes diagnosed later in life and um, oftentimes is caught, can be caused by both genetics and lifestyle. Um, and is distinguished by um, not producing enough insulin. The cells aren't producing enough insulin or cells um, are being resistant or ineffective to insulin. Um, so instead of the cells being destroyed, in type 1, the cells are just not producing enough or they're being resistant to insulin. So let's look at this mechanism really quickly. So a normal, healthy per person here will look at the stomach. What happens is we eat our food, remember, and food contains our, whoops, our food contains our glucose, and that is what contains the energy for our cells, right? Um, and the glucose then will go into our bloodstream. Um, and once the glucose is released in our bloodstream, uh, our pancreas, uh, the cells in our pancreas, then produce insulin. And the insulin is really what tells the other cells that, hey, 
look at all this glucose. Why don't you cells take up the glucose and use it for energy? Uh, you need the glucose for energy um, for that cellular respiration. There it is. So take it up and use it. Um, and that's what happens normally. So we eat our food. The glucose goes into our bloodstream. The insulin goes into our bloodstream. And then our cells uh, get signaled by our insulin to take up that insulin. In, or to take up that glucose. I'm sorry. It gets signaled by the insulin to take up that glucose. In type 1 diabetes, what, um, it doesn't work that way. What happens is that uh, people eat their food. The glucose is released in the bloodstream, but uh, the cells in the pancreas um, are being attacked by the immune system and um, are being destroyed and therefore can't produce that insulin. So the insulin isn't making it to the bloodstream. So then you have all of this glucose in the bloodstream. And what happens is it's, it, it's all in the bloodstream and um, it gets excreted as waste. So you get really thirsty and then it, gets filtered out through your kidneys, and then you urinate a lot of blood glucose. That's why your urine sometimes smells and tastes sweet when you have diabetes, because there's all of this glucose that never got taken up by your cells because the insulin wasn't there to tell your cells, hey, take up this glucose. In type 2 diabetes, it's, it's similar but slightly different. Uh, you eat your food, the glucose comes into the bloodstream, uh, and sometimes you get a little bit of insulin in, but it's ineffective insulin. Um, and this insulin doesn't work. Um, and therefore, you still have all of that glucose in your bloodstream. So it's not either you get not enough insulin or ineffective insulin. And um, so you still have all this glucose in your bloodstream that then you urinate out. Uh, so you get kind of the same result, too much glucose in your bloodstream. Uh, but it just happens in two different ways, type 1 or type 2. 95% of people with diabetes have type 2 diabetes. So we're going to talk mostly about type 2 diabetes because 95% um, of people have type 2 diabetes. Uh, we will cover... And it is one that we can most, we can do kind of um, some health around. Uh, in type 2 diabetes, if it goes untreated, um, if you don't do proper treatment, basically, as I said, uh, the blood sugar level gets too high so we get a lot of blood glucose and it spills over from the blood into the urine and so you get that sweet urine um and common symptoms uh, is excessive urination and excessive thirst and this is just kind of a look at what it would look like on a cellular level so your pancreas produces that insulin, and then uh, the insulin is supposed to bind to the cell and say, hey, bind to the cell, and then let the glucose in. But what happens is in type 2 diabetes, it's ineffective, and it doesn't fit into the cell. 
it's ineffective. And so it doesn't let it bind and therefore the glucose can't come in. So usually it fits really well like a puzzle piece, but um, in type two diabetes, it kind of gets to be ineffective and it bounces off or maybe it's shaped more like a circle or something like that. And then the glucose can't fit in to the cell. There are other types of diabetes. There is pre-diabetes, which um, means really pre-type 2 diabetes, um, which is higher than normal blood glucose levels, but not high enough to classify as diabetes. But you really are headed in that way. Um, and usually are uh, advised to change uh, lifestyle uh, so that you avoid the diabetes diagnosis. There is gestational diabetes, which is high blood glucose uh, during pregnancy, uh, which poses risks both for the mother and the uh, child. Um, and sometimes this is, uh, sometimes can be lifestyle, but sometimes is genetic and unknown why this happens. So diabetes and health. So why are we avoiding diabetes? Why is diabetes bad? Uh, both type one and type two, what do they result in if your blood glucose goes unchecked? The long-term effects can be blindness, uh, kidney failure, uh, amputations from poor circulation and healing, uh, heart attack and stroke, damage to blood vessels, in, uh, increases in infectious disease, uh, tooth and gum diseases. And why is this? Why would increased blood glucose cause all of this? Well, if you think really about kind of the mechanism, what's happening is that glucose, the really, the need for, right, the glucose is that cellular energy. We need to get that glucose to the rest of our cells, right? so that the cells can do cellular work. And if they're not, if it's not getting to where it needs to go to do cellular work, um, then your cells in all of these different types of places can't work properly. Um, and that starts to cause a lot of damage. And it happens a lot of times on the extremities first. Um, like poor circulation, right? So um, <clears throat> our body protects our core a lot, our brain and our heart and our core a lot more. And you start to see in diabetic patients that their fingers and toes and circulation will start to go because the body's like, well, I need to suck up all this energy for my brain and my heart and my breathing um, and that's where all the glucose is trying to go. Um, so that's what it's trying to use all of that cellular energy for. Um, so if you're not controlling your insulin and your blood glucose levels, um, it can't get the proper glucose and oxygen, right, where it needs to go to your cells and it causes a lot of problems. So glucose and oxygen are really the basis of health in our body, that cellular energy. And then it causes all of these problems. Okay, so come back to here more about the seventh leading cause of death in the U.S.